Okay, so so it was not easy to grow up up uh, alone with a, a sick sister. No, but it was and never a lonely, hard as well. But there and, was and, not and so and much a lonely love. Mother, a lonely mother. Sister was not as she was supposed to be. She exactly. was. She was ill. She was ill, and she all had. The time. And she had her difficulties. And you were worried about her all the time. Were I? Of course. Yeah, well, I always wanted to help and I wanted her to take her syringe and always take her medicine. And when she started to get epileptical seizures, I started to get very scared. Yeah. And I still had to go to school. And I was quite shocked at that time. Why am I in school? Why aren't I next to my sister? But of course there was something about not being allowed to be nearby her because of the fear of death and that evil can come and ruin the good fear of death. Yes. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> there was always lack of resources. There was never enough resources. We were sort of there was poverty all the time. Sort of yeah. It was not. Yeah, there was always something that was missing. I was never allowed to have more than two pair of shoes. I was never allowed to have more than two or three dresses. No money to go to Latvia. Yeah. No. No way of having a week's break from the school or such there was it was always about Sweden about staying in Sweden not allowed to go to Sweden uh, your, to Latvia and your father didn't have couldn't afford to meet you either he didn't yeah have enough money. because nobody here gave him money and my father is a very intelligent man I've seen those people who studied in the same school as him they borrowed in millionaires, and my father has only his apartment, which he got. It's Luckily. obviously, obviously, Luckily. some kind of conspiration against my family, and it feels as if they, those who conspired, were the ones who got to win because they had some kind of hate inside of them. And uh, how was your uh, your teenage years? It was. Um... It was difficult because in Sweden there is a law that once you turn fifteen you're allowed to have sex. And once I turned fifteen, I became as a lamb. The wolf started running around me, and I became the lamb that nobody saved. And I had to deal with all kinds of mysteries about how my head was seducted. And every weekend I was out of the house. Never, never, never had I any understandment. All I had was my best friend of mother. And I, it was, and even that, the social services destroyed by by making it by making. It's illegal to smoke, and I. One thing I found in my life very interesting was to have a bit of calm with a cigarette, and to just feel the breath of my soul. And nobody understood this because everybody criminalized cigarettes. But cigarettes are actually not harmful if nobody puts chemicals in them. Or rat poison, which is also very deadly for human beings. Anyway, yes. everybody in school smoked, yeah? Some no, girls. not everybody, but the, the, the nasty girls smoked. Majority cigarettes. of girls the, smoked. The nasty girls, the immigrants, the hookers smoked. And I had to go out and smoke with them because they always wanted to be friends with me because I always dressed so beautifully, was so kind and so... And they knew that they could trick me with their attitude. And there was lots of alcohol too, yeah? 
always involved alcohol. I want my favorite thing to drink was Coca Cola and apple seed juice or any kind of juice like kiwi juice or grapefruit juice or. Uh, and nobody uses uh, any. I, ice milkshake, milkshake was my favorite. Nobody even had the had it as an opportunity on the list of on the list of liquids. Liquids, yeah. It was just coffee, tea, or Coca Cola, Sprite, Fanta. It was not even a, even something to choose from. And you have to say, in your kin, in your family, nobody smokes or drinks. No, my grandfather smoked cigarettes. Oh, yeah, yeah, your grandfather, but you hardly met him. But I mean, in but your, still, your father... I, ne I never felt it was dangerous. And I always enjoyed smoking cigarettes because I found it to be healthy. For me, it was health. For me, I could see I'm breathing, I'm feeling fine. But then other people started saying, you will get cancer from that, you will die from that, you're a criminal because you smoke. It was just like everything started to become, everything I do was a robot that was watching me doing it. Well, what do you, why do you think... Uh your family, your mother, your father, sister, never smoked or drank. Why do you think you sort of happen, I, happened to slide I, into this? Because, my, because other parts of my relatives smoked, which I liked. My father's cousin's wife smoked. And this was how I first took and smoked a cigarette. I took, we used to be in the forest and I just took a little cigarette that was already smoked from and went to the fire, lit it up and smoked and it was just fine. But but her she her her grand ancestor died from lung cancer. So there is obviously something that is very mysterious around my family, always wanting me to become pushing into these searches of and, and sickness. So the thing is that um, you were telling people not to use drugs, huh? Yes, I was. But people didn't listen, yeah? No, they never listened. And they didn't help to stop by them. No, and the, and the more and more, the, the older I grew, the more and more the victim I became in the struggle of finding good friends that did not use drugs. Okay, and uh, but before this uh, heavy stuff started, you were a happy, very powerful uh, young woman. You were working and studying and you went into high school, yeah? Yeah. You finished uh, the college yeah. with good degrees and yeah. you went into the high school. Yeah. No, high school is from nine, no, from 10 to 12. But I went to an international to university. college. To university you went. Yeah. And uh, you studied international... College. Economics. No, I did not study economics. So international relations. I international studied. relations. But they have economics also. No, but you, with but globalization and with the with the the main main area focus on nature's survival. On the environment, yeah. 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 So and then you had uh, before you finished uh, high school, you were one summer working in Latvian ministry. No, I finished high school and that summer I went and worked for the health, not for the health ministry, but the... For the welfare ministry, yeah? Yeah, welfare ministry, where I, where I was the main organizer between the immigrants that had left Latvia. It was re-immigration program yeah, for was, yeah. wealth ministry. Yeah. And you were the responsible person of that group. Yeah. 
And you worked there for more than a month, yeah? Yeah, I worked there for a month. And too. you met the Prime Minister of Latvia, yeah, who sort I of met the Prime proud Minister. for doing this yeah. project that you yeah. helped to arrange. Yeah. So there is a great record in um, Latvian states archives that you were doing perfect job. You were in the ministry for months, mm -hmm. and you were in good health. You have been studying, and when you were studying in Sweden, you were even working there uh, simultaneously, because... Uh, yeah, I, mean, I often had a job. I never was without money or anything, because Sweden is quite expensive, and especially Stockholm. And if you want to have fun there, you have to at least have 10,000 of crowns. And this... The, months, yeah. the, so, so, the so... Society only gives 1,000 crowns for children under 18, so it was quite hard to survive because I never got any money from my mother or father. Mm, it's not true, but, but anyway, I never you needed thought. more yeah. for your lifestyle. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, the thing is that. You had jobs, but you then chose a well-paid job for Norway, yeah? I, first of all, I chose a well-paid job in a restaurant where I really enjoyed working and I was feeling very happy. But the amount of money for the job that was required was too little because I often hear about people who have who earn hundreds of thousands of crowns by just sitting in their chair and looking in the computer and I had to work for at least two months in a very stressful job where my where my uh, attention was needed all the time until half past three in the night and after half past three I had to go and celebrate with other people that you, the day was done but I I am more of a calm person I am more of a nature person I do not want to celebrate as much as other people I, I just want to dance I'm a dancing person oh you're a dancing queen yeah you have been such a dancing star yeah. you were champion in uh, yeah. rhythmic gymnastics in Sweden yeah but also there it was a bit just like also with immigrants and never allowed to be a, with Swedish persons because it seems to me that it is just like they don't like me but there are people that like me now yeah you didn't have your kin yeah. you had to grow up without it that is a yeah. really criminal thing yeah. systemical, systemical crime of losing your tribe that protects you and loves you and cherishes you. Yeah. But anyway, you were fabulous. You 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 became a star of rhythmic gymnastics and, yeah. and dancing, and you were a group uh, gymnasts who mm -hmm. won. Uh, in uh, Malmö or Lund, where was that? In, in Malmö. Malmö. Malmö, yeah. And it was with ball and with... with. I don't remember actually. I think it was... Uh, I think it was... I don't remember which it was. I do you remember which it was? was I think it there ball? was a ball in Was it ball yeah. or was it... Uh, or was it... Let's uh, have Malmö. Malmö. Kiss this bee. Kiss this bee. Jumping line, jumping line. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, know what the name called. of it. You know which Yeah, yeah, you had it. both. There were several performances. There were several performances? Yeah, yeah. I don't remember, actually. Yeah, you were something like 12 then, yeah? 13. 13, yeah. Yeah, it was very impressive. You did such hard work as a child to get there. Yeah. Um, but but your uh, trainer loved you very much. You were her favorite. Yes, she was always Sophia. helpful. 
Oh, it's helpful. Yeah, she didn't have children herself, so she <laughs> she really yeah. adored you. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> and then you tried to get back to Latvia. When I moved back to Latvia, when Christopher brought me on his hands to Latvia, then you also followed here to Latvia. Mm -hmm. And then the thing hit us because it, the Latvian country had liberalized drugs on every corner of Riga. They were selling terrible but stuff. But I was quite lucky about that because I needed to forget that I had been raped. Because after I get raped, I always think very horrible thoughts about it. And it was, I needed to get out of that horrible rape thought because, and that drug that was selling on the streets, which was legal, helped me to not focus on rapists. It helped me to focus on just who I am and how I take one day at the time and surviving with my own energy. Okay, that was in Norway where you got raped. Yeah. yeah. And, but there was something else you said about Norway. You said that uh, you worked there in a hotel in the mountains yeah. for more than half a year. Yeah. Going to job from 6.30 in the morning until 3 o'clock yeah. every day. But you said that you were totally alone there without any Latvians. And yeah, there was nobody there. There was just gay people and they were all awful, unintelligent. And they were just like, ugh, something new. Like everybody wanted to get famous and ugh. It was just like, ugh, I had to, so had to be friends with them just to have a friend, you know. So this is such a synthetic culture. Yeah, it was just, uh, it was... It was, it was like a glass, you know, it's easy to crush if you don't like it, and that's what they did. Because it's, it's, un, it's, un, it's, not, it's not possible to have a relationship, a friendly relationship, if there is actual people you don't like. I mean, it's, and to be stumped at your child, in at your Driven into it, yeah. yeah. And, you, and you said also that you had this enormous salary in Norway, but you had also this uh, lonely trap, loneliness trap there, yeah. You were very lonely there. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, <clears throat> they were using drugs too, yeah. Yeah, they were. But I wasn't uh, using drugs there. In Norway, I never used drugs. I maybe smoked marijuana two weeks of the time. And I was there for five, six months. Anyway, they got you started there. They did. No, they never did. And... Uh...